Before we begin, I wanted to thank Rabbi Weiss for those incredible words of inspiration. I wanted to thank Chazak for getting us here tonight. And I also wanted to mention how incredible it is that it is the yard site of Sir Rick Martin tonight who has not been touched by the Ohel, by the a main group. And we owe a lot, and the Neshama should have an aliyah. Tonight we are coming together to celebrate Hanukkah and to say thank you Hashem. I didn't know it was a movement either, <laughs> but we're part of a movement now. And what exactly does that mean? After you light the menorah, turn off the lights and take a moment to just look at the flame. Ein lanu rishus, we have no permission to do anything Ella Lero Sondova, just to look at the lights of the menorah. Why? Because these lights are speaking to us and they are whispering, they are beckoning, they are calling out to all of us. They are telling us the story of our lives. My story, your story, the story of Am Yisrael. All that you and I have to do is look at that light. Why? Because Hanukkah is all about saying thank you to Hashem, singing hallow to Hashem. How do we make Hanukkah real? How do we do that? How do we take these days and really Say thank you to Hashem, really plug into that light, really understand what this Yantif Hanukkah is all about. I was in the local supermarket, and as I was doing my shopping, somebody stopped me, and she said, you do stories and you do talks, and I bet you'd love a good story. I said, I always love a good story. So she said, I'm a mower in a preschool. The other day I was giving the girls milk and juice and one little girl comes over to me with her empty cup and she says to me, Mora, I need more. And I looked at her and I said, sweetie, you forgot a word. Now. <laughs> and I was thinking to myself, you know, maybe that's a little bit what we do when we daven. We're a little bit like that little girl. Hashem, I need more, now. And we forget to say, thank you, Hashem. I have so much bracha in my life. I don't even know where to begin. Instead, we focus about all the things that we think we need, that we know that we need. And yes, Yeshua's and Rafu's and Shiduchim and Parnassah, all so important. But what about just saying, Thank you, Hashem. We don't want to be like that little girl. When we kindle and ignite our menorah, we do it in our homes because this light that is inside of us, this connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, this inspiration cannot be left for us in shul. We have to bring this inspiration home to the home where we live, where we breathe, where we eat, where we walk, where we talk, where we get up, where we go to sleep. How do we bring this inspiration home? You and I, tonight, we're going to discover it. Because Hanukkah is all about rededication, reigniting, starting again, finding a new energy. So tonight, three ways for us to say, thank you, Hashem, to make Hanukkah real. Number one, to say thank you to Hashem for the power, for the strength, for the light, for the potential that is inside each and every one of us. When we kindle our menorah, every single night we add another light. Why? Malin B'Kodesh, because our mission, our purpose in this world is to always keep climbing, go higher and higher, Make a difference in this world. See how you can make your today better than your yesterday. Hanukkah came about through 
a woman. The Nase came about through a woman. She was an almana, she was a widow. Her name was Yehudas. There was a very cruel general at the time, Holofornus, and he would go from city to city in Eretz Yisrael. He would surround the city. He would surround them and not allow any water or food to get into the city until everyone, their lips would be parched, they'd be starving. Men, women, children, he would be so cruel until they would surrender and give up. So Holofornus comes to one city. He makes a siege around the city, and the people are frightened. They start to get hungry. They start to get thirsty. I want to read to you the words from the Sefer that describes, so you can really feel what Am Yisrael went through. Vayitzma'u ha'am l'mayim, vayomru b'nei Yisrael el Uziah. The people, Am Yisrael, they were so thirsty for water, and they came to their general, Uziah, Koha Anashim, Hanashim, Bachurim, Vinarim, Yachad Kulam. Everybody, all the men, the women, the children, the young, the old, everyone came to the general. His name was Uzi, and this is what they said Masur Elohim Otanu Biyadehim the Ein Ozer. Hashem has given us into the hands of our enemies, and there is no one to help us. And when everyone heard this, and the army and the people who were soldiers heard all the screaming and crying and the bitter weeping, they came with a huge cry. Am Yisrael, and this is what they said. Listen to their words. Chatanu im avoseinu, hevinu vehirshanu elokim. We have sinned, Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Al damilach, be al tacharash. Hashem, please, don't be silent. Don't leave us alone. Don't be quiet. Be al tishkod. Ana ha'av harachamon, chamol alamecha. Please, Hashem, have rachamim on us. Please, Hashem, don't abandon us. Don't let there be silence now. Uzziah's eyes filled with tears. Come, Uzziah, and he woke and he got up. The Enav Dolgo Dimaot, and his eyes, the general, the strong general of Am Yisrael, he begins to cry. And what does he say? Be strong, have courage. They came to an agreement. If after five days we do not see the Yeshua, we do not see the salvation, we give it up. We surrender, we just give it up. There was one woman, one woman, who came with her voice and her amuna. Her name was Yehudas. Yehudas had in her home a room that was set aside for tefillah, where every day she would immerse herself in tefillah. She stood up with her voice and her courage, and this is what she said, Can you imagine this one woman comes to the general, comes to Am Yisrael, she says, What is this thing that Uzziah is thinking to do? To give over a Jewish city to the enemies? And you are thinking that in five days the Yeshua doesn't come? You're going to test Hashem? You're giving Hashem five days? Lo zu haderch, this isn't the way. You think that you can say to Hashem, I'm going to give you five days of Kaddish Baruch Hu, and if at the end of the five days I don't see the Yeshua, I just give it up? This isn't Emunah. This isn't faith. And so everybody agreed, and they went to her, and Uziah said, Daven for us. She said, I will, I will daven for you. But even more than that, I'm going to go and I'm going to cross enemy lines. I'm going to go to Heliformis and I am going to gain his trust. Everyone started to scream at her, what are you thinking? But you know what? She did it. She actually crossed enemy lines. She actually gave him wine. She gained his trust. He fell asleep. 
She gave a tefillah to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, a tefillah like she never gave before. And she called out and she said, Hashem, just as you helped and saved Yael, who killed Sisra, Hashem, help me. And with all her might, with all her courage, she killed Helifornis. There was confusion. The enemy ran away, and there was the nace for Klal Yisrael. This set off the Yeshua. Now, last year, I had a Hanukkah party for women that I teach. There were a hundred women and their daughters in the room. These are women who are rediscovering Yiddishkeit. These girls do not go to yeshiva. My daughter told the story of Yehudas. At the end of the party, a wonderful, sweet little girl, 10 years old, came over to me with her mother. And she said, I have a question for you. I said, sure, what's your question, Bobola? And this little girl looks up to me, 10 years old, she said, I want to be a hoodist. I want to do something for the Jewish people. What can I do? I want to make a difference. And I'm thinking to myself, what will I tell this 10-year-old girl? Really, what, what can she do? But we're really all the daughters of Yehudas. Each and every one of us has within us the spiritual DNA of all the women who came before us. So I told this little girl that in a few weeks, I'm going to have a mock Shabbos. Because I'd really love to have a hundred families in my home for Shabbos, but not possible. So instead, we're going to do a Shabbos on a Thursday night, so that everyone can have a taste of Shabbos. I don't know, I said, maybe you can do something for that Shabbos program that we're going to have. That was our Shabbos project. This little girl went home, so inspired. She was determined to be Yehudas. So what did she do? She made slime. She made slime every single day. And then she sold her slime. She called her grandmother to call her grandmother's friends to buy her slime. She put a stand out in front of her house in Brookville, Long Island. She sold slime. She sold a thousand dollars worth of slime. And then this little sweet girl, this sweet Nishama, called me up and said, I'm going to take my thousand dollars from slime and I'm going to make this chal cover that says on it, Hineni. I'm going to give it to every single family who comes to our Shabbos project. And on the back, she embroidered, created with love by Lily, in memory of our dear Rebbitzin Esther Youngrice, with wishes that we all feel the light of Shabbat in our hearts. One little girl, 10 years old, because she was inspired by Yodas. Thank you, Hashem, number one, for giving me the ability to be Ma'alim Bakodesh, to keep on striving, to keep on growing, to keep on making a difference in this world. We have that potential and light in front of us. All we have to do is plug in. Thank you, Hashem. Number two, thank you, Hashem, for the bracha that I have in my life. Take a few moments tomorrow night. After we light and kindle the menorah, just look at the lights and think about all the bracha that we have. Now, this is not something so easy to do. Do you know why? Because many times, we are so busy looking at everybody else's blessings that we forget to see our own. Wow, how come they're going away for Hanukkah and we're not? Wow, how come their kids always look so happy and you 
guys are always fighting. How come her husband gets her that? How come his wife does that? How come they're just that perfect family? And we never take the time to realize that everybody has a challenge. That before they took the picture, and after they took the picture, somebody was probably pushing somebody else, somebody wasn't smiling, somebody had a tantrum. Nobody's life is perfect. And we cannot look at other people's lives and think, why not me? Because then we are missing out on our bracha. We're stressed. And when we're stressed too, it's very hard to find the bracha in our lives. My son who lives in Eretz Yisrael, when he calls me for Shabbos, when he calls me during the week, I always ask him for a good word. So my son asked me a very interesting question. He said to me, when we say al hanisim, Mami, why do we say al hanisim, the al ha-purgam, the al ha-gvuros, the al ha-chuas, the al ha milchamos? Why are we thanking Hashem for the milchamos, for the wars? Yes, thank you for the nisim, thank you for these shoes. Who wants to say thank you for a battle, for a milchama, for a war? Think about it. And then he said to me, but you know, Ma, that in all the battles of life, in all the challenges of life, that's when we discover who we really are. That's when we find our koach, our energy. That's when we figure it out. Who am I? What am I capable of? What is my potential? It's when I climb that mountain. Yes, life is a test, as my mother used to say to me. Life is a test. And the word for test is nisayon, which also comes from the word nes, which means miracle, and nes, which means banner. Because when you go through your nisayon, when you go through your test in life, you are going to discover who you are. You are going to create the most magnificent banner. You are going to hold it up. And nobody and nothing can ever take this banner away from you. It has your name on it. And this becomes your miracle. Alhamdulillah. These are the challenges of life. If I can even see my bracha in the challenges, I can live life on a different level. Because you know, in a desert where the sun shines all the time, nothing ever grows. It's when there are storms, and there's winter and summer, and there's rain, and there's wind. That's when you discover the beauty of trees and flowers. That's what life is. There's a couple that I teach, and they moved to California to a beautiful place called Malibu. One day I received a call, and there was a lot of noise in the background. I said, what's going on? Oh my gosh, they said. Did you hear about the fires here in Malibu? I said, yes. You wouldn't believe what happened. And they described having exactly six minutes to clear their house, to evacuate in Malibu. You can't imagine, they said. What do we do? What do we take? How do we pack up? So we take all our dishes and glass and silver and we throw it into the pool that's in the backyard. Throw, which is throw everything. And then we put something into, a, into a, this luggage and this luggage and we get into the car and the fire's behind us and we just keep trying to drive and drive and drive as fast as we can. And we make it and now we're living with my mother-in-law. And there's no school for the kids. And then I hear a dog in the back, and I say, is there a dog? Yes, we have three dogs, and there's no room. And it's just impossible. It's impossible. I don't know what to do. So I said, listen, Ganze Ya'avar, this will pass. 
But how do you get through it successfully? How do you get through the challenge successfully? In the time of David HaMelech, King David, there was a magifa, there was a plague. A hundred people would die a day. What do you do? So David HaMelech and the Chachamim of the time said, there's a Pasuk in the Torah, Ve'ata Yisrael, and now I'm Yisrael. Ma Hashem Elokecha? What does Hashem want from you? Ma is Meya, a hundred. Make a hundred brachas a day. When Am Yisrael started to make a hundred brachas a day, the Magefa, the plague, went away. This is what I want you to do, I said to this couple. Take out, and I didn't have a gratitude notebook or journal like everybody has here tonight, but this is a good thing to do with it. Take out a piece of paper, I said, and make a family meeting. Can you come up with a hundred brachas, a hundred blessings? And there was silence. I said, I'll start you off. You are alive. Do you know how many people didn't make it? You have a place to go to. There are people in tents in the shopping center of Walmart. They have nowhere to go. You're in a warm place, in a warm bed. Your children are alive. We're going to try, they said. Two days later, they called back. We did it, they said. A hundred blessings, a hundred brachas. And every time we get a little bit down, we take out our paper, we start to count. One, two, three, four, a hundred brachas. When you leave here tonight, can you come up with even 20, 30, 40 brachas? But imagine a hundred brachas. Because when we see our bracha, we connect to Hashem in a different way. It's not what we don't have. It's what we do have. It's not saying, I need more now. It's thank you, Hashem. It's a different connection to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's a positive instead of a negative. And the more positive we become, the more positive HaKadosh Baruch Hu becomes with us. Number three, the third way for us to say thank you, Hashem, is to say thank you, Hashem, for allowing me to be part of this incredible nation of Am Yisrael. Do you know what this means? That we have a spiritual anchor, that we have a Torah, that we have mitzvahs, that we have community, that no matter where you go in this world, you're a Jew. You connect with somebody. You're never lost. You're never alone. HaKadosh Baruch Hu never abandons us. No matter what, HaKadosh Baruch Hu never abandons us. Thank you, Hashem for making me into this Bas Melech, this daughter of the king that I am, so connected to you. When my children were little, we would go to my parents' home for Shabbos. The favorite part of Shabbos was Lel Shabbos Friday night. And in the basement, there would be sleeping bags all over the room. After everyone, all the kids would put on their pajamas. My father would come downstairs, he would sing the Shema. And then my mother would come downstairs and all the children would say, Boba, could you tell us a story from when you were a little girl? Now when my mother was a little girl, she shouldn't exactly go to regular camp. She was in Bergen Bells. And these were their most favorite stories. Not because they were sad, not because they were frightening, because they were empowering. I will always remember the way my mother would say, Lichte Kind, my precious lights, my Zisa Shefalas, my sweet dears. When I was a little girl, I was your age. I was in Bergen Belsen. I was so cold. I was so hungry. We were so frightened. My head was shaved. 
I was covered with sores. I was freezing. Every single morning, we would get woken up. I would have to stand in the snow for roll call. I would see those Nazis who marched along with their German shepherd dogs, their tall boots, their fur hats and coats. They were so warm. Their stomachs were filled. But every single day I would look at them and I would say, thank you Hashem for not making me one of them. I would never want to be one of them. I only wanted to be the daughter of my Tati and Mommy, your Mama and Zeta. I would only want to be part of Am Yisrael, surrounded by Malachi. Thank you, Hashem, for making me who I am. Kedei lahodos ulahara, to thank Hashem for allowing us to be part of this incredible people. So I'll end with this thought. When the Hashmona'i came into the base of Mikdash, and they were looking for the Shemin's eyes. They were looking for that oil. What were they even thinking once they found it to even light? Because it's impossible. They needed to light for so many days. They needed to have a narrow tummy. Why light it? Why not give up hope? Because Am Yisrael, our people, we never give up hope. If somebody at that time would have a kaleidoscope into the future of Am Yisrael, what would they see? They would see the Beis HaMikdash on fire. They would see us being led out of Eretz Yisrael with chains, footsteps in blood, being sold as slaves in Rome, crusades, pogroms, inquisition, blood libels, being loaded onto the cattle cars, into the crematoria, I myself am named for my bubby, the rabbits in Slavachana. And the last time that she was seen, together with her husband, her Rav Yisrael Halevi, young rice, Zedekar Tzadik Levracha, they were taken to Auschwitz. And my Zeta was holding his safe retire in his hand. And my Bubba was holding her youngest grandchild. This is how they went into the flames. And here we are, we are a nation of miracles, suicide bombers. The whole world is against us. BDS, even here in America, we have suffered killings because we are Jews. How is that even possible? Do we give up? Never. And that's the message of Hanukkah. To see the bracha that we have in our lives. Thank you, Hashem. I ask that everybody rise to say together, Nishmas, thank you, Hashem. It's in your back. Nishmas kalchai tivarech es shimcha Adonai Elohim. Veruach kalbasar tifa'er usiromein zichcha malkinu tamid. Min ha'olam li'ad ha'olam ata'el. Umi baladecha ein lanu melech goel umoshia. Hode umatzil umifarneis umirachem bechol es tsara v'tsuka. Ein lanu melech ozer v'somech ela ata, Elohei harishonim ha'achronim, Elohei kol brios, Adon kol toledos, Hamihulo berov ha'tishbachos, Haminaheg olamo bechesed v'riosov berachamim, Va'adonai lo yonum velo yishan, Hameorer yishenim, Vahamikitz nirdamim, Vahamishiach ilmim, the Hamatir Asurim, the Hasomech Noflim, the Hazokev Kifufim, the Chalavadcha Anach Nimodim, Ilu Finu Male Shira Kayam, Ulishone Nurina Kamongalav, the Sif Sose Nusheva Kimirchave Rakia, the Enenu Miros Kashemesh the Chayareach, 
v'yadinu ferushos k'nishri shemayim v'raglinu kalos k'ayalos e'in anachnu maspikim l'hodos l'cha adonai eloheinu v'elohei avoseinu u'levarech es shimcha alachas me'elef alfei alafim v'ribei rivavos pamim ha'tovos sh'asisa im avoseinu v'imanu Mimitzrayim ge'altanu Adonai Eloheinu, umibes avadim pedisanu, berav zantanu, uvesava kelkaltanu, mecherav hitzaltanu, umidever milatitanu, umichalayim ra'im, v'neamanim dilisanu, adheina azarunu rachamecha, velo azavunu chasadecha, v'yal tetshenu Adonai Eloheinu lanetzach, Mimitzrayim ge'altanu Adonai Eloheinu, Mibes avadim pedisanu, berav zantanu, beseva kelkaltanu, mecherav hitzaltanu, midever milatitanu, mechalayim ra'im v'neamanim, adheina azarunu rachamecha, velo azavunu chasadecha, v'yal tetshenu Adonai Eloheinu lanetzach, al kein evarim shapilagta banu, v'ruach u'neshama shenafachta v'apenu, v'lashon asher samta b'finu, hein heim yodu v'yavarchu v'yashabchu, v'yafaru v'yaromu v'yaritu v'yakdishu v'yamalichu, eshimcha malkenu, ki yichal peh l'cha yodeh v'chal ashon l'cha sishava, v'chal berech l'cha sechra, v'chal koma l'fanecha t'shtachave, v'chal l'vavos yiru'ucha, v'chal kerev u'chleos yizamu l'shem Mecha, Kadavar Shekasuv, Kolotz Mosai Tomarna, Adonai Michamocha, Matzil Ani Mechazak Mimenu, Vaani Veavyon Migazlo, Mid Melach, Umi Shvelach, Umi Arochlach, Ha'el Hagadol, Hagibor Vahanara, El Elyon, Konei Shemayim Vaaretz, Nahalalcha, Nishabayacho, Nifaercha, Nivarech Hashem Kajacha Kaamar, לדוד, ברכי נפשי עשה אדוני וכל קרבי את שם קדשו.